Welcome to Keller's Coder. Today we will have a look at my 1991 portfolio from Atari, or actually DIP, and how I ended up with two of them recently. Motherfucker! So this here is my 1991 Atari portfolio. The reason I bought this was actually I had a parallel port and on that parallel port I created a little interface with an 8051 microcontroller that could generate CCITT5 tones and that way I could freak phone hack and make free phone calls. So I would dial a toll free number, do a system forward, then get a new dial tone and then dial any other number in the world. I never dared to do that at home because I was afraid I would get arrested or even worse, fined. So I love this device because I could take it to college with me and my friend and I would sit at the little phone booth in college and find out all these toll free numbers that we could use to actually freak our way uh, and make free phone calls. And this was ideal because it was relatively small although with the parallel interface on there and my expansion board and neither I could find anymore, that's a pity. Uh, it was still rather big. So in order to get the parallel port and write that infamous program that John Connor used, making it screen accurate, uh, I had to buy a parallel interface because I couldn't find mine anymore. And I found one, but it came with another Atari portfolio. So now I have two and one has no parallel port, so I found another one that's on its way from America. So I have two complete portfolios and I will send one off to somebody else, uh, sell it or give it away. But you definitely need one of these to make it somewhat of a useful device. So let's have a closer look on this ancient device, which is not from Atari, it's actually from DIP. Uh, an English company and Atari was the only licensee of this device. So this is my bulk standard 128 kilobyte of RAM portfolio with 30k C RAM disk. That sound. Reminds me of our first marriage. Well, technically engagement because we never got married because suddenly this stopped. So what's the use of getting married then, right? Well, there is the first YouTube strike for misogynistic remarks, but look at this keyboard. It's very legible and very useful. And you can hear the clicky sound and that is actually generated by the little speaker and you can toggle it on and off. The screen is a 40 by 8 character display, LCD, and you could actually generate graphics on it with a proprietary driver. Now this is the expansion slot, we had a parallel interface, a serial interface and later even a MIDI interface. And on the other side we have the B memory cards. These were a Japanese standard and used very much in synthesizers and these cards were horrifically expensive. 128 kilobytes would cost you half the price of this machine for so around $200, insane. And this is the thickness of the machine. For a complete 8086 machine in 1989, it was not bad. The sticker says California, but it was actually developed by DIP Research in Guildford, Surrey, UK. And Atari was the only licensee of this product. So it's actually pretty much a yuppie device. When I bought it, I had more money than brains, to be honest. Because with these specs, even in 1991, it was not very useful. So I had to program a lot of assembly on it to get the most out of it. Or you had to buy these expensive cards, which nobody basically did. And the apps that are included, not really up to scratch to do anything useful. And that is what we're going to do now, is actually write a little assembly program to make a screen accurate, easy money hack that John Connor used in T2. So let's jump in and have some fun. Please insert your stolen card now. Let me screenshot this. Here we see they start counting with a fixed string and then some random numbers. That fixed string is actually missing a couple of numbers here and here, as you can see. So let me grab a screenshot of this so we can model it. We 
hurry up, this is taking too long. In slow motion, we can see that every line iterates five times and then it decrements either by one position or two positions alternating. So that is easily doable. And then we end with 9003 and a prompt. I don't have A, so we need to fake that as well. So this is... Easy money. Come on. So first, let's create that opening screen. So here we defined it. We can see it here in the screenshot. And we end each string with a dollar. And a dollar is the end of the string. So we can actually use AH9 inter 21 to print screen string to screen and the 10 is a line feed and the 13 is a carriage return then here we define that weird start code string that has the six missing here and the nine missing there that we scrap the screenshot off and again carriage return line feed and a dollar then this is the pin code that is found and it's printed to the screen 10 times as we saw in the slow motion and then the actual pin identification number is 9003 that we print to the screen and the A prompt that I need to fake because I don't have an expensive B card and I will refuse to buy one. So here is the main routine. We first start by calling AH0AL2 interrupt 10 that clears the screen. Then we load that string with the pin uh, splash screen we call a print subroutine that I created then we call a key press subroutine because we see John Connor typing PI so probably pin enter that starts the application and then we see him pressing an enter key so that's a, a, a random key so key press and then we generate all that scan code that is a subroutine that I wrote and again we wait with a key press after we have printed the identification number and the A prompt. And then we exit the application. It's that simple. So here we uh, print that start code with the missing six and the missing nine. Then we say print 38 uh, random characters. And this is the counter that counts five positions every time. Here I generate a random number and here I range that number in between a character 0 and a character 9 and this is just a print character combination AH02 and integer 21 then we wait a little uh, then I increment the counters just to keep track on where we are a new line and here we actually go through that whole thing that we deduct either one position uh, where is it here deduct either one position or deduct two positions i think that they actually hacked that into the movie because i think that they initially just done one position and it was too slow so they probably asked like okay can we just alternate it somewhere yeah, we still have a lot on the screen, but it doesn't take too long. So I think that was a last minute uh, hack. And here you see I use an end on that uh, counter with one to see if it's an odd or an even line and then determine whether to subtract two positions for the next five rows or one position. Easy peasy. And then we are done. So when we're on position four, or actually position five, because we start counting from zero, then we know we have the pin code and they show it 10 times on screen. So I load that pin code 9003, show it 10 times in this loop. And then the message, your identification code is 9003. And that is the whole source code. And in total, that is 468 bytes. And the C program that I created was a whopping two, 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 the extra 12 kilobytes. I could optimize it and then I would get nine kilobytes. So yeah, it served to code in assembly. And now we need to upload it to the portfolio. You use your parallel port and a straight 25 pin cable. 
you press Atari S to get into the setup menu. And there you select file transfer and then server. And on your PC you start the ft.com, you type T for transmit and then the absolute path of the file that you want to transmit and then the absolute path on where to put it. For this video I actually had bought a Laplink cable because I always thought it used a Laplink cable but it uses a serial protocol over parallel. So it's on there, now let's make some easy money baby. So in the movie we see John Connor typing PI, so I assume it's PIN. And then we have this screen that we modeled after the screenshot, screen accurate. And then that weird little line with random numbers that starts off with the two missing digits. And these are all the pseudo random numbers. And I chose pseudo random because first it's easy and secondly movies like continuity. And then we have the 9003. Easy money baby. And the A prompt that I'm faking because I don't have an A B card in there. So if I press enter we go back to the C prompt. So that's a bit of a hack. So there you have it. We created an easy money program on the Atari portfolio. I know many people have done this before me, but hey, it's not about being unique, it's about doing it yourself. And since I have programmed a lot of assembly on this device in the past, I figured it was a nice thing to do, especially not being able to find my Demon Dialer interface or my Parallel interface. Now, as I said, these were pretty much yuppie devices. Even back in the early 90s, they were pretty useless and relatively expensive. And now I own two of them. So what I will be doing, I will be giving one away to one of my favorite retro channels and hopefully you will see it pop up there. And one tip, if you ever buy one of these and they are relatively affordable now, around a hundred bucks, get one with the parallel interface and get yourself a straight 25 pin cable. Otherwise, these are absolutely useless because you cannot get your software on there. And if you find some affordable B cards, and they're still not affordable to be honest, then get one and you have a lot more mileage of this little machine. So I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.